Play me some mountain music that grandma and grandpa used to play. And I'll float on down the river to a Cajun highway. Howdy. How's it going? Welcome to the stream. Bang, crash. Damage. Craziness. All right. Hey Anthony, how you going man? Thanks for coming in. And thanks for the video suggestion. <laughs> Hopefully you enjoyed it. Oh, come on. There we go. Whoa. Excellent. Good to know. Good to hear. All right. Yeah, I did loosen a little bit. It's all good. All right. I'm gonna give myself a little extra room. Down that much? You reckon? That looks good to me. How are we doing on the stream? Is it looking okay? It's always a bit finicky out, the, out here in the shed. So, out there, I think. Looks good. Piece, isn't it? Durian wood. Okay. Now, what am I doing? Do I want to rip it? No, I don't want to rip it before I cross cut it. I shall cross cut first. That's what I'll do. Ah, excellent. Good to hear. Yeah, YouTube's algorithm's really weird. Unless you've hit that, um, that bell icon, the notification button, it won't show all of the, uh, all of the posts, even from people you've subbed to. It's a real pain in the ass is what it is.
på. Aha, cool. Cool, cool. It's good to know people are still watching my videos. <laughs> I haven't lost, lost my subscriber base yet. It's always good to hear. Right, so, we want to go oversized. What are we looking at? That is about 30 mil. So I'll go with 35. I can handle it. Where's my pencil? Uh, there it is. Ah, uh, you mongrel. Oh. That was a terrible mark. Whatever. This is when I wish I had a woodworking bus. He's got a split. It's a nasty split too. Yeesh. Okay, let me double check my grain. Yeah, that side looks better. We'll do the other side. Uh, okay, so because I'm filming on the forwards facing camera, the selfie style camera, it mirrors everything. So everything I'm doing, like at the moment, it looks like I'm holding this in my right hand. I'm actually holding it in my left. <laughs> so, yeah, it gets a little, uh, it's a little weird. I'm actually right-handed. But yeah, it's all mirrored, so. There you go. Um, yeah, no. No. 
I suppose it's supposed to make it things easier for the user to, I, you know, get an idea of where things are in relation to the screen because we spend so much time staring at the camera. That's better. Didn't muff at that time. beautifully straight grain. It's uh it's not making the sword deviate at all. It's some really nice grain. I'm hoping this is gonna make some decent handles. I've never worked with this specific style of this type of wood before so Followed the line pretty well on that one. Perfectly square. Very nice. But yeah, now that wood is just so beautiful to cut. It doesn't want to deviate at all. Hey Luca! Yes, finally a live show. I know, I know, I've been really slack in getting my live streams out. But uh, yeah, it's been, been madness around here. For some reason, the comments are disappearing faster than uh, the axes. Yeah, sorry guys if I don't respond to your um, your messages quickly, your comments quickly, because for some reason they're just disappearing off the screen almost as instantly. The axes are these three. 
three Viking style throwing axes. There you go. All identical in weight and size. But I'm making the handles for these. Similar to this one, which you'll recognize from the uh, YouTube video I did on axes. This one's been beat up quite a bit. Um, the steel I used, these are actually forged out of um, HC rail spikes from America. Um, I bought in a bunch of uh, brand new rail spikes from a railway that shut down in California. And uh, they're all marked HC, which is high carbon. It's around 0 0.4, 0 0.45% carbon. It's not the greatest steel for edge holding and stuff like that, but these are designed as throwing axes, not as camp hatchets or anything like that. They're fairly light, as small as you can see. They're made for throwing. Um, I can chop with these, like I've chopped with this one quite a bit. Um, this one's made out of the same HC spike um, and they, they work really well. Um, but yeah, they're, they're not designed for the heavy chopping work of a, of a standard ax. Um, they hold up. This one hasn't seen too much damage, even though I've held it at trees and hit steel and all that kind of stuff with it, so... It works. Doesn't have to be pretty, just has to work. <laughs> steel vice with your nice spoke shave. Let's just say that. I might have to bring out the plane. Plane away all of this crap. Yeah. Lay this device. Lay this down a little. Let's see if we can get rid of that shoulder. The the issue isn't so much the um, the ability of the tool, I mean, I do have my draw knife here, um, but it's cracking because it's going against the grain. And the, the issue with going against the grain, especially with a draw knife, is that it'll want to dig. And if it digs, it could split out quite a large chunk. So I want to just scrape the top off. So ideally, go to a plane and I can cut it the edge here. Just getting started on it that's the problem. Just gonna back my iron off a little bit. There we go. Much smoother. These ones, this is just taking really, really light shavings now because I'm just trying to smooth out the surface a little bit, even up the taper. Good. Oh, this cut's really nice. See, it's pure, beautiful, pure shavings. Absolutely stunning. Short stroke there. Short stroke of the, the um, plane to get taper. Nice. That's what you want. So now we've got a nice, smooth, even taper. Going up the length is not going to be very obvious yet. Time for the other side. Get the spoke shave again. This time it's working back towards me now, so it's a little easier. But of course it helps if you unjam your spoke shave. And get really nice peeling shavings off here, which is brilliant. Ugh. 
Yeah, yeah. Yes, paper out of those, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> getting pretty decent shavings. Pretty good, pretty good length. It's a little fractive. It tends to crumble a little bit, but that's okay. Jar is the same. Getting a decent, clean, full shaving off a piece of jar is pretty uh, uncommon. But yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I know your love for, for charcoal, Luca. Don't hate on the charcoal. As they say, don't hate the player, hate the game. Charcoal is but a player in the game. Yeah, yeah, the Channel Forge was a, a big step forward for me. Absolutely. And that Channel Forge will feature on this channel at some point. Gas is definitely cleaner, yes. Yeah, there's a reason that I mostly use my gas forge over my charcoal forge, is because I don't like sweeping up dust or ash. spoke shaves is they work just like a plane crossed with a draw knife so you get you can control your depth of cut by moving the iron in and out and, but you also have the added advantage of having tilt control so you know if I want to take a corner off I can do that fairly quickly not to say you can't do that with a uh, plane but this is just a little bit easier and you don't run the risk as with the draw knife, of furrowing into your uh, into your workpiece. So yeah, it definitely has an advantage in that respect. Speaking of planing, the plane. tell if you've sharpened your plane properly if it leaves a perfectly smooth finish. You don't get any kind of jagged rough edges where it's grabbing the grabbing the fibers of the wood. thickness there. So we're going to have to take it down a little bit, but what I'd like to do is work the uh, front and back taper first. And for that, I'm going to turn it up and grab my pencil. The other advantage of the plane is that I can keep the uh, keep the parallels quite square. Whereas with the spoke shave, you tend to wander a little. That makes marking quite difficult. Oh. <laughs> I'm 
multi-bar construction Damascus Viking sword with gold inlays and wire wrapped handle. Absolutely, yeah, that, that's right on my list. Right next to, uh, you know, sending a rocket to the moon. Because, you know, I'm an astronaut. <laughs> Yeah, no, a Viking multi-bar blade is actually on my list of things to, that I want to do. Um, and uh, maybe one day when, I, when I've got the shot for it. And uh, all the necessary equipment. And I'm not, you know, a single man working alone. Maybe then. Maybe then I'll try it, and we can have a nice video of me fucking up. A perfectly good multi blood blade. So the tiny little hand plane, Tim, is not a tiny little hand plane, it's a spoke shave. This is a um, designed originally for shaving the spokes of um, wagon wheels and stuff like that. From uh, It's originally intended for a turning square like this into round. And I have uh, a couple actually. I've got this little one and this bigger one. This bigger one I haven't set the plane iron as you can see. At the moment, it is quite proud. <laughs> That's not what it's supposed to look like. But I'll get around to fixing it uh, up at some point. At the moment, I'm enjoying using my new little Stanley. There's a, a round bottom spoke shave so you can get nice scoops with it. Um, as far as Damascus goes, Luca. Um, any etching that you do with ferric chloride will rub off. Um, it's only made for depth, not for uh, contrast. Uh, same goes for hydrochloric, uh, nitric, all that kind of stuff. They're all designed for depth etches rather than contrast etching. If you want the contrast, you need to use uh, the coffee or um, sodium, sodium hydrochloride which is a little harder to get hold of than coffee. Um, no, Anthony, a 20 part video is not appealing. Not to you, and not to me. Uh, Alex Steele, I'm not. <laughs> I think three, uh, I think a three part video on the Basilar is gonna be bad enough. Okay, so basically what you need to do is first get your depth etch and then you need to go for your um, contrast etch. So if you've got ferric or nitric or whatever you're using to get your depth, go for that first. And then once you've got your depth, do your contrast. And then that way, when you, um, when you do the contrast, it'll be in the valleys in the Damascus, which means that you're less likely to remove it by rubbing. Unfortunately, no Damascus etch is permanent. Um, so, coffee etch is pretty simple. All you do is um, about one part coffee to uh, 10 parts water, so, you know, a fairly, a really strong cup of instant coffee, and you have to use instant coffee, you can't use, uh, ground or, um, you know, barista style coffee, because it doesn't have the acetates in it, it doesn't have the acids in it, um, and so once you've done that, um, you just, uh, I prefer to do my coffee etches hot 
because the coffee reacts with the uh, with the metal faster when it's hot. And um, yeah, just leave it in there 20, 30 minutes. Take it out, check it. If it's good, good. If it's not, put it back in. If you need to, take it out, heat it up in the microwave. Go again. It doesn't tend to work well on San Mai. That's pretty much it, Tim. Exactly what Tim said. I use black and gold myself, actually. I had a tin around here somewhere. Yeah, I don't know where I put it. <laughs> the cheapest, shittiest coffee you can, can find is normally the best. This is giving some really nice, really nice shade. Oh, I love this thing. Check that out, that's just one nice shaving. The coffee, it needs to be hot. The steel can be hot, because obviously the, heat's, the, the steel's gonna heat up inside the coffee. Um, as far as the difference between the coffees and the acids, uh, apparently coffee has, a, well, the instant coffee has um, drying agents put in the, uh, put in the instant to dry the coffee grounds, uh, to dry the, um, the coffee sugars, because all instant coffee is is basically uh, dehydrated um, barista coffee. It's, it's, it's just, yeah, coffee without the, uh, the coffee. <laughs> coffee without the drill. And uh, yeah, so it, um, these drying agents are acid based and they um, have a certain elemental ability to uh, darken the seal. I mean, the main advantage of the coffee over the acids, um, forgetting the ability to turn it dark, is the fact that it doesn't. Uh, etch deeply, it only etches darkly. Come on. Come on, you know what you want. Come on, you bust. Not sure if you're going to be able to see that, but I've cut a little bit of a no worries, Anthony. Thanks for checking in, mate. I'll see you in the next one. <laughs> well, Tim, there are a couple of reasons why I'm doing this by hand. One, it's quieter, so I can talk to you folks without having to scream. Um, and also, I like working with handles, and um, the third reason is that it's 7.30 at night and I have neighbours living right next door and I prefer to keep them happy because unhappy neighbours can make your life hell, so yeah. <laughs> I have noticed that Forge and Fire comes later to us, but the thing is, I don't get um, Forge and Fire because I don't have Foxtel or anything like that which could catch it. Alright, so now we have, yeah, you can see that now. It's nicely tapered that way and that way. I'm not worried about these marks because they're going to come out when I plane it. But yeah, we're almost to our final shape. And we should be able to almost, almost, ooh, we're a little bit thick for that one. 
Now this should be about the same because they use exactly the same drift. Um, where's the third one? What the hell, Sam? Nathan would be, if Nathan was here, he'd... Yeah, cool. Uh, so I'm imagining you were meaning Mokume Gane? Copper and, copper and nickel combined. Back to the spoke shave for a minute. Because I'm a little bit thick. try Mocha Magane and eventually I will I'll create a Mocha Magane press and try it in my forge but now I got more important things. Oh god. Going against the grain again, Sam. Pretty much every day, yeah. This is my full-time business, so yeah. Every day that I'm not working in the workshop is a day that I'm not making money. Of course, I can't be in the workshop every day because I have other things to attend to. I have a wife and a stepson who sometimes require my attention. And I also have friends, occasionally I have friends. Not often, mind you. All right, cool. So, now, leave it like that. I haven't got a website, Tim. I do sell stuff through my Etsy store. Yeah, I do have an Etsy store. Um, if you go on Etsy and look up Samtown's Bladesmith in shops, you'll find me. Or it's www.etsy.com slash au slash shop slash Samtown's Bladesmith. It's a hell of a mouthful. Um, but yeah, I don't, I don't currently sell via any website because I haven't got around to it and I'm lazy as hell. And uh, I tend to be working custom commissions at the moment rather than uh, online based sales, so most of the stuff I make is on commission. This stuff here I'm making is for a market that I've got coming up on Saturday. And um, so, yeah, I need to get this done so I can have some stock to sell. I've also made a bunch of bottle openers and Viking cloak pins, which always sell really well at medieval reenactment stuff. So those will, those will be coming with me too. And uh, yeah, just getting it done. But um, yeah, if you're ever looking for something from me, you either can find it on my Etsy page, most of the small stuff that I make tends to go on my Etsy page, or you can contact me directly either via my my YouTube page, or my um, Facebook page, or my Instagram DMs. I am always willing to talk about commissions. All right, sweet, so we get. Now is the fiddly part, where it's just constantly check and recheck. Check, change, and check.
speedway going on in the background. And a little backdrop. Yeah, um, so like the, um, I was talking about commissions, the Basilard video I did recently, the Dagger, that is a custom commission from one of my medieval reenactment friends, and he will be uh, getting that when I finish it. And likelihood is, if you make a custom commission from me, there will be a YouTube video about it unless you specifically request that I don't because it's great content and obviously I don't have time to both make content and make stuff. Um, one thing I do do occasionally is um, make filler stuff like the broadheads and stuff like that. I have no idea if I'm going to the Dawn of the King. Um, last year was a bit of a shambles, although I met some pretty awesome people while I was there. The, uh, the whole thing was a little, uh, underwhelming when it came to organization. And I'm not particularly interested in wasting a day of my time. Ah, yes. Um... Renting the workshop. So, I am currently in talks with the owner of said workshop. A uh, guy by the name of Luke. To start doing classes. So, um, I've sent a pre-contract to him and hopefully in the next uh, week or so I should hear back. And we might be a go. Which means that very soon I may be hosting classes and if anyone's interested they'll be able to contact me through my Facebook page once the post goes up. So yeah, um, I'm really, really excited to get that going. Uh, teaching has always been something that I've wanted to do, so kind of a dream come true for me. And now I've started the head onto the haft. That's nice. I like that. Oh, this one's quite a ways on. So the eyes are just slightly different. It'll be the depth with which I drove the eye on. Uh, the drift in, I'd say. So this one needs some removal up top. God, I love that. I love that feeling. Yeah, um, Tim, so at the moment, the space I have available only allows me to do certain kinds of classes uh, due to the limitations on the amount of tooling that I can have there. Um, so, at the moment, it'll be intro to blacksmithing classes, just um, teaching the rudiments. But um, there is a chance in the future, in the very near future, that I will be going to a slightly larger facility that will have the ability for me to take my grinder and stuff like that along 
so that will make it easier to do hammer making classes and axe making classes, which is definitely something I also want to do. And bladesmithing classes, which is another thing I want to do at some point. Yeah, absolutely, Luca. I mean, had I the option to do a beginning, uh, beginner blacksmith's class with someone, I would have jumped at the chance because it's just so valuable to learn those basics or relearn those basics, even if you've already learned them, just to, to rediscover. And sometimes people have a different approach to certain problems than yourself, and uh, that different approach could be beneficial in the long run to your overall abilities but yeah no i would i would suggest that anyone who's wanting to improve in their craft comes to have a class with me but of course i would because i'm the one doing classes so yeah shame, shameless self-promotion there but it's the option to get behind a hammer for people who've never been behind a hammer and it's the option for someone who's done it before to learn maybe something new and it's a one once and done thing rather than joining a guild which can I know sometimes throw people off because they don't particularly want to put bother joining a guild all right We're down there down there we are getting there people so you can see, it's going on. Um, I'm not sure if you're going to be able to see the t top and bottom are both open, but the sides are flush, which means that I need to, I'm just going to give it a wiggle and I'll pull it off. And that means that I've got a marker for where I need to remove some thickness. You don't want to remove too much at once because obviously you can always remove more, you can't put it back on. Alright Luca, cheers mate, thanks for dropping in mate. Oops. Feel free to drop comments guys, I'm always happy to answer any questions you might have. I understand that sometimes watching guys do this kind of stuff can be a little boring, so feel free to add your two cents. Always remove material from both sides. So you even out the wear on the material. Oops. Don't go too hard at it because you might break something. Actually tempted to leave it there. That's a pretty decent length for a throwing axe for a, of this size, a mouse hawk. So I think what I'm going to do is I'll just no, I won't drive it on yet. Knock it off. There we go. So it's already fitting tight, which is good. But now I'm just going to grab my files. Back in two seconds.
And this just evens out all those tool marks from the uh, from the stroke shave from the plane. It's useful to have a uh, file card on you. Just clean them file teeth. Always going along the teeth. And in this section here, I tend to turn over to the round. Love how half round files for this purpose. Because you get all of the curves. And then you can do the flats with the flat side. One thing for the craftsmen out there, if there's any craftsmen watching, one thing that always grinds my gears is um, craftsmen who try and make the ex I don't have a video of me making these three little, uh, three little ones, but I did make a video on making one of them a while back. Uh, if you go back in my video, in my video log, you'll find a video of me making a mouse hawk, throwing hawk. Exactly the same process as making these three. Anyway, yeah, uh, as I was saying, craftsmen who decide that they can excuse uh, poorly finished items based on the idea that it's uh, quote unquote handmade. I have unfortunate news for those craftsmen is that handmade used to be a distinction of quality. It used to be that if you bought something that was handmade, it was the epitome of craft. It was the best that that workman was able to achieve with whatever tools they had available. And even with limited tools, you can make something quite spectacular, so... I don't like the idea that we're going to excuse ourselves from being accountable for our actions by covering ourselves with the, uh, the catch cry of, oh, it's handmade.
And that's it. Absolutely, Tim. Couldn't have said it better myself. Now, there becomes, there just does come a certain stage where you're getting diminishing returns. And uh, by that I mean, there's a certain point where working on something, just for the sake of working on it, is uh, basically uh, counterproductive. And um, that stage is really up to you to decide. Uh, for instance, these these throwing axes, they're going to be bolted around, they're going to be thrown around, they're going to be bashed, they're going to be smacked into each other. Likelihood is these handles are going to be shattered pretty nastily. Um, in use. So, does that mean I should leave the handles rough? Well, me personally, I like a nice smooth handle, so I'm taking this to 400, which is what I've got in my hand right now. And I'll flame the handle and I'll put the oil on it. picks that up is going to go, ooh, that feels good. It's a thin handle, but it's good. And that's what I want. I want people to feel like they've got something worth having. To add a nice little personal touch, I'm just going to... The wood is durian. Durian wood. It's a Malaysian, Indonesian wood. Uh, I've never used it for handles before, so I'm a little trepidatious. But uh, I'm interested to see how it goes. That's exactly the one. Fruit woods tend to be pretty good for flexibility. Apple wood is known as a pretty nice wood to work. Um, pear wood, it's good for uh, pipe holes actually, for smoking pipes. Okay, seeing a bit of a bite there. Not sure how close I can hold this to the camera, if it'll still focus. Focus, damn you camera. I have, um, spotted gum is a good axe handle, if you can get it in the right, um, if you can get it in the right diameter, it's a pain in the ass to find it in the right diameter. Most of the spotted gum I come across is uh, floorboards, which unfortunately are 19mm and they're no good for uh, uh, axe handles. Yeah, Wondu is uh, an amazing wood. Actually, my entire house is floored in Wondu, and that stuff is hard. We tried to um, use a 75 mil nail gun in my floor, and uh, the nails were sticking out like this from the boards, just being driven in with the nail gun. You could not nail into it without pre-drilling. It was insane. So yes, I have the utmost respect for Wondu. Unfortunately, like I said, the Wondu we've got is floorboards, which is all 19 mil. Again, massive pain in my butt. 
Well, if you've got literally tons of the stuff, feel free to send some my way. <laughs> I wouldn't mind a couple of tons of one do. Absolutely. Bet your ass. Much as you can send me. And answer your question. <laughs> Bring you down to my level. There you guys. You've shrunk. <laughs> All right, you got one do at your at your house, do you? Lucky bastard. Where did the chairs go? Jesus. Bloody apprentice is stealing the chairs. Whoops. Kicking the camera now. Oh. Something I forgot to do before I finished these. Oh, and Dowie, nice man. Yeah man, if you're if you're willing to give up some, I would be more than happy to take it off your hands. Fair enough. Funny, I made a mental note to do this before I uh, before I handled these, and yet I forgot. That's what getting distracted will give you. I'll we'll have to catch up at some point, Tim, and I'll have to steal all of your wood. One do any straight stuff, especially. <laughs> Hopefully it's not all full of cracks and checks and stuff because um, if it's not seasoned properly it just won't work with handles. Fresh fallen timber is good but uh, only if you can treat it. I love Hickory George, uh, absolutely adore it. Unfortunately it's not native to Australia and getting it here is a massive pain in the ass. I have a couple of hickory handles uh, on axes. Uh, actually, no, I've got one, one axe with hickory handle. I sold the others um, that were store bought from Bundings. That went back when they had hickory, and I've heard that Atom. Uh, so sorry. Um, who are they? They supply a car. Uh, Car repairs and snap-on, snap-on. Apparently, snap-on have really cheap uh, hickory uh, hammer handles, but unfortunately, they don't have a storefront. You've got to catch the truck, um, so you kind of, kind of got to hunt down the, the truck when they're making a delivery in order to get your hands on some hickory. And the only other hickory I have is backing my English law, English warbow. I've got an English. Uh, uh, 70 pound English Warbow um, that's backed with hickory uh, and it's got a belly of walnut I believe I think it's walnut ah, that looks much better much much better very nice you want to make sure that you've got a nice even eye The yeah, eye stretched at the bottom, but that's okay. We'll make it work. I am very envious of my uh, American brethren who uh, have free access to that kind of stuff. Hickory, maple, ash, 
God, kill for that. But uh, yeah. Oh, nice. So it's kind of like, um, kind of like old, old um, oak. Petrified oak. The Swedes do that actually. Uh, Swedish, Swedish shipwrights and carpenters and stuff season their wood in water. Because apparently it creates a better, better thing. So that'd be really cool. I'll, I'll, I'll take some of that. <laughs> I like making stuff out of stuff that has a story. So I can say, hey, I got this off my friend Tim. Just don't tell everyone we met on the internet or people might make assumptions. Oh, well, I don't have a ute, so we'll have to measure that out in station wagon loads, but yeah, sure. <laughs> suggestive right now, you know. front of my house. I've tried to using it for handles before, but it, it <coughs> didn't do so well. She's binding again. See the black spots? Got to take them out. Take care of him. Oh, gotta take care of him. Jimmy? Don't know why you called Jimmy. Don't ask me, I'm just talking to myself. Anyway. You know, it's great. I, I used to talk to myself all the time. Now I have a camera. <laughs> ah, thank you very much. Yeah, I have no idea if salmon gum's any good. Um, Louisville Slugger. Yeah, and thanks for that. Yes. Unfortunately, sanding wood gives me the sniffles. <laughs> Especially uh, Jarrah type woods, which I think Durian is a, is a eucalypt, so. No, it's not. It's a fruit tree. What am I talking about? Oh, it's just dust in the air then. <laughs> yeah, um, I... The problem is that Louisville sluggers are incredibly... Um, expensive. And I don't want to buy one just to cut it down to make hammer handles out of. <laughs> um, it's 
Spotted gum is pound for pound uh, as good as hickory, and um, it's a it's a pretty pretty wood too. Uh, I've got um, I've got an axe with a with a spotted gum handle, and that worked out pretty good. Pretty good. What am I looking for? Come on, Sam. There we go. You know, um, I recycle uh, old sledgehammer handles when I crack the heads off. Um, and the last one I recycled was hickory, so that one went on my dog's head hammer in the dog's head hammer video. Turned out to be hickory, not spotted gum. I think I put spotted gum in the video, but it turned out to be hickory. Should have been fairly obvious, but you know, lesson learned. Looks pretty sus going on down here. As long as I'm not smiling into the camera, I suppose. You guys will never know. <laughs> Alrighty, so shloop. God damn it. Actually, before I do the stupid thing, try it the other way. See, this is why, nope, nope, nope. swearing sound Jesus I don't know which is worse swearing or blasphemy I suppose it would depend wouldn't Sore arm doing this. <laughs> and award for the most awkward sounding live stream ever goes to Samuel Towns. So close. <laughs> Shovels, picks, and rakes, yeah. Yeah, I wish I could get Hickory 1x8. That'd be friggin' awesome. Yeah. I like making custom handles for hammers and axes, especially axes that, and hammers that I've made. Hey, Sigwan, how you doing, man? Long time no see. Here I am, finally doing a live stream. Oh, that'd be awesome, George. You don't have to, though, man. It's pretty freaking expensive. Where are you? You're in the States? Yeah, well, I haven't had much to stream about, Sigwon. So, it's kind of been... No need. I've been so busy doing other stuff. I'm surprised Nathan hasn't joined the stream yet. Lazy bugger. Boston. Nice. I had a friend who lived in Boston. She's not there anymore though. It's one of the places I want to go. God, I, God knows why, I just want to be able to, you know, say I've been to Boston. Yes, hashtag married light, unfortunately so. Um, 
No, no, it's been great. It's just been, um, actually, it's been hashtag business life, actually. <sighs> oh, that was a good idea. Yeah, no, I've been um, so busy working up working up the uh, stock for the markets and stuff like that that I haven't had time to stream because I've been so bogged down. And unfortunately, I'm coming to the end of my money. Um, doing this for a living when you're just getting started is uh, not the easiest thing to do, and I am I am pretty much almost flat broke. So I'm hoping that I'll be able to sell some stuff pretty soon in order to recoup some costs. That's why I'm working so frantically on this stuff. I've got a market at a medieval reenactment thing I'm going to with the SCA. Sorry, I'm looking down the camera now. Um, the SCA's got a big event on this weekend called Pen Camper. It's uh, out of Aberfordu, if you're familiar with the SCA at all. I don't know why I'm really focused on the vice at the moment. There's nothing going on at the vice. I am just standing. You look like those guys on the, um, what's that, that Omegle, you know. <laughs> so yeah, I'm doing a, I'm doing a forging demonstration and a, um, and I'm doing a market there as well. So I'm, I'm hoping that I'm going to be able to uh, sell some stuff while I'm there, make a little moolah. And I have been considering starting a Patreon because, uh, I mean, we're at 276 subscribers, I think. I heard, or I checked, um, I checked last night and I was about 276, which is fucking incredible. But, um, unfortunately we're a long way off a thousand. 279, wow, okay, cool, we're almost at 280. We're getting there, we're getting there. Um, yeah, no, so, um, fuck. <laughs> um, so yeah, we're a long way off, um, we're a long way off 1,000, and unfortunately, YouTube won't uh, allow ad revenue or monetization of videos until 1,000 subscribers um, and 10,000 viewing hours. Uh, 10,000 viewing, 10,000 views in 12 months, which I'm well over the 10,000 views, which is awesome. Um, but yeah, I, I need a lot more subscribers if I want to start making money off YouTube. So I am considering starting a Patreon so that I can actually keep doing this. Because I love making these videos, but unfortunately they take up a lot of my time. And time is not something I have a great deal of. So, um, it'll depend on whether people want to keep seeing my videos or not, I suppose. I can always hope that people want to see me. I can hope. Alright. So that's pretty much it. So now I've just got to knock that into place. I should probably use the software. Shout out to Nathan, my apprentice, for making these soft jaws. They are awesome. <laughs> I didn't tell him that I was doing the stream. I should, probably should have. He's going to be all pissed at me that I didn't tell him that I was doing a stream. Alright. Now it's time for what you've all been waiting for. Not really. But anyway. The wooden mallet. Look at that. It's almost like there was a video on this this morning. It's got one angled face and one flat face, which is 
or the way I made it on purpose because I want to be able to angle my blows if I needed to. It's really good for this kind of stuff. Don't hate on the chair, man. Don't hate on the chair. I'm a poor self-employed blacksmith. What do you expect? I make do. <laughs> That's beautiful. Beautiful. That ain't going friggin' nowhere. Okay, Felipe, I have no idea what you said. No habla, oh, no habla espanol, unfortunately. Try and get it square with the... Yeah, it's one of three, four chairs I have in this workshop, actually. It's just the first chair that I grabbed. Whoa. This is why I like this Kiridashi. I can use it as a marking knife, as a whittling knife. There's a chisel, it just fits all my needs into one cute little package. This one was a bastard to make though, because I decided to forge it out of three quarter inch round 01. <laughs> Which wasn't the smartest idea. Bicycle tracks. Um, so, bicycle tracks. How do you make bicycle tracks? I'm, I'm, you know, that might be a really ignorant question. I may be sounding like an idiot right now. But do you mean the actual tracks that bikes ride on, or...? Fair enough. So is that like the tracks that go along the side of the highway and stuff like that, or? Am I missing something? Yeah, tracks, yeah, okay, cool, sweet. There we go. I was being a moron. Cool. Good to know. Don't do this at home, kids. You'll screw up your fingers. Not really blacksmith related. Ah, yeah, well. Not, not too much these days is, unfortunately, but someone's got to do it. Isn't that right? I mean, no one has to be a blacksmith anymore. There might be one or two employed by the rail, the old railways as kind of a historical thing. I have seen a position advertised in New South Wales recently for an artisan blacksmith to work full time. So any of my followers who are in New South Wales, if you're a blacksmith, feel free to jump on that. I bloody well would. 
Don't remember where I saw it, but I did see it like this morning, so it's probably still available. Although, knowing that knowing the amount of blacksmiths that I know in live in New South Wales, the likelihood is it's gone. I can't see it standing around too long after the blacksmithing community at large got a hold of it. Ah, no, that's fine, Tim. Jesus. We talk about everything on my channel. Everything. As long as it's, you know, relatively PG-13. Hell of a lot of innuendo and a little bit of swearing in here, but we, uh, we try and steer away from the super adult. Because we do have kids come on here occasionally. Although the later it gets, the, the less likely that is. Yeah, no, I, I'm... Feel free to talk about anything, man. I, I The reason I run these live streams is not just to share my craft, but it's to get to know my viewers, get to know people. As a, as a self-employed blacksmith, I don't get out very much, so this is my... This is my socializing. This is the way I... Learn about the people who are watching my videos, what they want, what they, uh, any ideas you might have. But not only that, but I also want to hear about, you know, just what you guys are up to, who you are. Because the, the, the biggest thing that I, the biggest issue that I have with uh, most media, not just YouTube, but most media outlets, is that to, to most media, you are just a number on a screen. You're just... Your viewer number two seventy five or whatever you know you're just you're just a number, and I I prefer to think of every person on that list. I, I try to think of the fact that it's um, more talking in my vids. Yeah, fair enough. There's there's mixed reviews on that one, but the big the big thing is that um, you know I, I want to know. Who's behind the number? You know, like, I don't want my viewers to just be numbers. And so, yeah, I, I really appreciate it when people come onto the stream, even if they just want to talk about, you know, what do they do for work or, you know, whatever. It's cool to be able to interact with these with you guys and, and um, yeah, gain some familiarity so that when I see your name come up in the comments, it's just not like, hey, it's that guy. <laughs> you know. Get an actual community going. Because I value the people who value me. I, I, I value the people who are willing to, you know, come along on my, uh, on my learning journey and, and are willing to overlook my seriously flawed uh, practices. Hey, Paul, how you doing, man? Good to see you. Welcome to the stream. Here I am rambling on about getting to know people. And I keep thinking, you know, I should get in touch with Paul and we should catch up. At some point. I mean, I think you're miles away from me, but that's never stopped me before. <laughs> noises all around me. Paranoia level 60. Yeah, actually, I, I've been meaning to meet up with a lot of people. Uh, are you going to be available on July 28th, Paul? You gonna be in Perth on July 28th? Because if you are, there's an awesome thing that's going on that I'm organizing. Ah, uh, well, make sure you free your calendar because it's the next Perth Knife Makers Meet being held on July 28th, Saturday. And Bruce Barnett will be there. We've managed to secure Mr. Barnett to uh, attend, and oh, it's going to be awesome. You haven't come out to one yet, so... Time. <laughs> it's time. Yes. <laughs> he will give you a folder if you give him money. <laughs>
Really should have done this before I seated the seated the head, but you know, waste not, want not, and all that. <laughs> yes, always a catch. Smells nice. Yeah. As far as your question, Tim, uh, why the flame? There are two different reasons to flame a handle. One is if you're doing the Japanese preservation technique that um, requires burning and oiling. Uh, normally they use uh, pine tar um, to seal. And that's for weatherproofing, for waterproofing. Um, I know that Alex Steele does it because Brian Brazil does it, and Brian Brazil does it on all his hammer handles. He fully flames his handles to um, remove all of the little furs, little, the little uh, fibers that stick up after sanding. This specific style of flaming that I'm doing right now called tiger stripe flaming, for obvious reasons, um, is purely aesthetic. It's, it's just because it looks good. That's, that's all. Um, boring, I know, but I like it. So... <laughs> And now some BLO. Boiled linseed oil. Beautiful linseed oil. Got a high grit sandpaper here. High grit is 800 grit, which is really high for wood. But I like to do uh, a high grit uh, or a um, steel wool. Actually, do I have steel wool? I have steel wool. Two seconds, guys. I will be back. Okay, so um, this specific type of axe, Tim, is fitted from the bottom. So this is tapered all the way down to here. So it actually slides on this way and then wedges in place going that way. So when you throw it, it is trying to propel the head off the end, 
which is stopped by that big knob there. It's not the most secure, I will admit. The European method of hanging, which is the, you know, split on wedge, uh, is much more secure, but this allows for easy removal and renewal of the handle. Um, because these are throwing axes, they're gonna get broken. They're just, there's no hammer handle material, handle material you could use in the world that will stop these from breaking. So you make them so that it's easy for you to remove the handle and put a new handle on. If you've got the wedged piece in there, a lot of the time you have to drill, yeah, like a matic handle, exactly. Um, you know, if, if you've got a wedged handle in there, a lot of the time you'll have to drill the wedge out, you'll have to, you know, you know, smack it all out with a drift. Whereas with this one, I can be out in the bush somewhere and if this, hammer, if this handle breaks, then all I've got to do is get a branch, whittle the branch down, and slide this thing on and I'm ready to rock and roll. The, the, the con to that pro is that it's a lot easier to come loose. But if it does come loose, all you do is invert it like that, give it a smack and the head tries to move down. Or if you're in a workshop like I am, you just stick it between the vice jaws so that the, uh, the shoulders are sitting on there and smack the, the top down, which is actually a lot more, uh, a lot better for this because it's so unevenly weighted, the head will try and move up before the pole does. So yeah, the main reason that it's not wedged is because it's designed to be removable. <laughs> yes, absolutely, I'm a psychopath. <laughs> Actually, I like carrying these little throwing axes, just one of them, <laughs> as, a, as a camp axe, actually. Um, they're beautiful, because they're so light um, that they don't, um, they don't take up much room. They're easy to carry around. And I can do pretty much everything I need to with one of these little, little axes. Hey, how's it going, Luca? We are just putting the coat of oil on the first handle, and it's actually looking really nice. Uh, I love the love the gold color, and it's coming. It is coming through on the camera. It's like a beautiful honey, honey gold. That's beautiful. Love it. Now I'm gonna give you the, these handles a pretty good soaking in linseed oil because that'll uh, that'll toughen them up a little bit as well as it solidifies. But you yeah, know these these little mouse hawks, they're great as um, they're great as little camp axes to take out with you with the bush um, because they're so light they don't take up much room. Um, when I do my hiking trips and stuff like that, these are, these are the kind of axes that I'd love to carry because as much as I love my little bush hatchet, I've got a bushcraft hatchet um, that I use. It's a lot heavier. Uh, it's just a lot clunkier than than this kind of style of hatchet. Um, if I was going to use this for that kind of stuff though, I would definitely forge weld a high carbon bit into the railroad spike just to give it that little bit of extra edge retention. Hey, Anthony, we're all, the, the whole team's back. The whole crew's here. Excellent. That's what I like to see. Yes, we're still going and I'm probably still going to be going for a little while longer because uh, I've still got two axe handles to make. Do I test my blades after before I give it the after what? The who what? I don't think you typed that correctly, Luca. Might wanna double check. I test my blades before I send them out to customers, yes. If that was the question. I think that was what you were aiming at. I think that was what you were driving at. I always test my blades. Especially blades made from unknown materials. And it pays as a maker to test your, test your blades. Even, even if they're a known steel and you've used all the correct heat treating methods and all that kind of stuff, it just really... Yeah, yeah, after the heat treat, yeah, absolutely. The, the big thing is that you, you don't want to give your customer... You, your, your entire business relies on... Um, your ability to stand by your work. 
And if you're not able, if you're not testing your blades, then you're not going to be able to stand by your work because you're not going to know if they perform or not. Um, I have never had a blade break in regular usage. Ever. I have broken blades on purpose. I do that all the time. Uh, every tenth blade about I make, I make specifically to break it. Um, and that, the reason for that is because I want to be able to test my heat treating methods. And so I make a blade to break. That is absolutely true, Zygon. Absolutely true. So there you go. There is the axe. Now it's all coated in oil and stuff like that, but I'm going to leave it like that for about an hour. And then I'll wipe it off. Because that'll soak in. And it'll actually be relatively dry by the time I come to wipe it off. I won't sharpen it until I take it to the... Um, until I go to the market, so like the day before the market, I'll sharpen it all up because it'll rust. Yep, yep, that's 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 pretty reasonable, Anthony. Um, that's basically what I do myself. Um, I with the smaller blades, I'll pitch them at a pitch them at a tree a couple of times before I put the handle on. Um, but yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, it came out pretty good, actually. Look at that. It's not bad. Nice honey-colored handle. I love that. I love the look. And the flame goes with the honey color really well. I'm, whoa, I'm jealous of the person who buys this. It can, yes, it can. I don't do that personally because I prefer to hand strop all of my blades. Uh, because I'm an old school kind of guy. And I find it's much easier to screw up a machine finish than it is to screw up a hand finish. I didn't say it's impossible to screw up a hand finish though, because that's not true. <laughs> it's, it is definitely possible to screw up a hand finish. It's just that machine finishing removes material so much faster. And, and even with the buffing compound, that's true. You can round out an edge in no time, which is why I like using little little strops. Well, man, you know where I live. You know where, where, I, where I'm at. So, um, you know, just get in touch and we'll organize a day and you can come down and I'll take you through the whole lot. We'll just, uh, you just have to get in touch with me and we'll, I'll, uh, I'll take you through all, everything I know about sharpening. I will do a video pretty soon about sharpening blades. Um, make sure you hit that like button, by the way, guys. I see there's five people watching right now. Make sure you all hit that like button. Um, the more likes it gets, the more, uh, recommended it gets, which is great. Uh, I just gotta grab a extension cord because the battery's about to die. I grabbed the largest fucking extension cord that I've got. Ugh. Click. Why you no work? Is it working? Yes, it is. Okay. Well, that's good. <laughs> Thanks, Anthony. Always good to know I've got my supporters. Yeah, thanks for the offer, Luca. Um, I do actually have a few people who come down and work with me. Yeah, so tongue oil is a beautiful oil, and I use tongue oil for all of my. Actually, I've got a. <laughs> I bought. Now, uh, 
Feast Watson sell it as Scandinavian oil, but it's actually 100% tongue oil. <sighs> and then you've got your kitchen timber oil, which is just 98% uh, tongue oil and 2% uh, something else. So yeah, it is 2% like a uh, water based something just to give it that food rating. But realistically, tongue oil is always food safe. But this stuff I use for my knife handles, knife handles only. Uh, mainly, the main reason for that is because it's, um... oh yeah, that's right, you see it backwards. Okay, well, just think about seeing it in the mirror. <laughs> Um, the reason that um, I use tongue oil on my hand knife handles is because it seals really well and it gives that really beautiful shine. On axe handles and, and um, various other handles, you can still get a pretty decent luster with um, nothing but boiled linseed oil. Boiled linseed oil, not raw. If you use raw, it stays wet forever. Oh, 280. Yes. Love it. Um, but yeah, so... The boiled linseed oil, which has a hardener in it, uh, pale boiled is good. Uh, I've got pale boiled linseed oil, which you won't be able to see because it's reversed, um, is better because it's cheap. <laughs> the, ba the main difference between this stuff and that stuff is that this takes longer to harden. And it doesn't harden as hard. So... Um, the other thing is, is that this requires a few more coats than the tongue oil does to get a decent sheen on the top because this penetrates deeper, which is why I like using it for the axe handles and stuff like that, especially on uh, really, really dry wood, is that it soaks it up really well, whereas the tongue oil tends to sit on the surface. Yeah, well, so, see, raw linseed oil will harden because boiled linseed oil, originally boiled linseed oil was just literally boiled linseed oil, funnily enough. It was just linseed oil that had been boiled. Um, so so that the the standard, the, the natural resinous cont content had, was increased per gram of oil, which means that it hardened faster. But with the raw linseed oil, it'll take about five times longer to harden than pale boiled linseed oil. And the advantage of it hardening faster is that you can put more coats on faster, which is really good for guys who make tools or use tools because you don't want to be oiling shit every 10 days and in between having this gunky handle that picks up nothing but lint and dirt and nastiness uh no technically no you can never over oil a handle the only way to over oil a handle technically like over oil is to put too much oil on so that it drips everywhere and that when you try and swing it it slips out of your hand and flies into the person next to you but no when you're applying oil there is not too much you can never put too much on and you can never put too many coats on if that's if that makes any sense um actually for linseed oil pale boiled linseed oil i recommend uh the old school yeah, absolutely. Hardened cricket bats. Yeah, it hardens the surface quite well. But um, boiled linseed oil, uh, I recommend one coat a day for a week, one coat a week for a month, and then one coat a month for a year. And then normally you can do one coat a year every time, every year after that, uh, just to maintain the the finish of uh, a linseed oiled uh, handle. Which is sounds like a lot of work, but it's actually really worth it. Um, most axes and stuff like that that I sell don't end up getting that much of a treatment because I need to send them off. So normally I get about two to three coats on, and normally those are in consecutive days before I send it off. And then I always, um, I don't, I really don't. I just oil it whenever I think of it. Uh, I, I just, I, I, <laughs> yeah, oiling diary. That sounds right. I have watched Peapotty one actually. He's pretty cool. I, I, I enjoy his channel. He's done some really cool stuff. I, I enjoy his um, his attitude. It's it's great. But yeah, no, I don't keep track of my oiling. I literally oil every day until I ship the thing. Or if it's mine, I oil it every time I remember. <laughs> uh, like, I've got an axe that I recently oiled again. It's hanging up on the wall over there. Um, when, I, when it looks like it needs an oil, I make sure I oil it. <laughs> because I don't want my wood 
drying out and getting punky and cracking and, and doing all kinds of horrible stuff. Anyway, back on to making axe handles. So I need to grab my wood again. <laughs> I might think, think there's enough in there for one more. Need the soft jaws for now. Yeah, today I'm actually talking about people who come over to help me, Luca. Um, oh, cool. I haven't seen that one yet. I'll have to look that up when I, uh, when I get off stream. But, um, talking about people who came to help me out, actually, I had a striker over today who helped me make these three axes, and he also helped me forge out... Ugh. A Japanese bladesmithing hammer, head, dog's head hammer, which I will finish tomorrow. That one is for me, because as you guys probably know, I sold the other one. What is the benefit of what? Well, if you have to ask that question, you obviously have never swung one. That's a good idea, Anthony. Every time you're oiling something, just oil them all. No such thing as oiling too much. Yeah, Luca, if you have to ask that question, then you've obviously never swung one. But you'll have to change. It will change your life. Nah, I'm just kidding. It's all about personal preference. Um, the main advantage of dog's head hammers is that all of the weight of the hammer, much like an axe, is at the front of the handle. As you, as you strike, the head naturally orients itself downwards. Like, you know, I'm letting this hang freely. It's just wanting to drop perfectly in line with the floor. Whereas with an equal sided hammer, um, I've got, actually I've got a uh, rounding hammer head over here. With an equal sided hammer, you can see that it depends on how I orient my hand as to how the, the hammer is oriented. Like my finger is just at rest right now, but you can see that it's not online. If I tilt my hand like that, it's because the weight is even. Whereas with this Japanese dogsmith hammer, if I turn my finger like that, the head doesn't want to doesn't want to move as much. It wants to naturally orient itself this way. So when you're swinging, it naturally falls straight, which means that you get a lot better accuracy for your blows. And you can also generate a lot more uh, energy with these than, um, than with equal hammers of the same weight. <sighs> right, so marked my Mark my words. <laughs> One more scribe for good luck. sure it doesn't move. It ain't going nowhere. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it, it's, um, I wasn't convinced of the usefulness of Japanese bladesmithing hammers when I first, uh, first originally came across them. I kind of was of the opinion that it was only cool because it was Japanese kind of thing. So many things are popular only because they're of a certain culture. But um, after using one, I was blown away. And um, 
Ever since I sold the last one, I've been meaning to make myself one. And um, I have a project coming up, a collaboration project actually, with another YouTuber. Well, he's not actually a YouTuber, he's more of an Instagrammer. He's got one YouTube video. Another bladesmith. He and I will be doing a collaboration next week. Super secret squirrel stuff. But I'll tell you right now, we've been in the planning phases of doing this uh, collaboration for about a week now. And um, I am... I am really, really looking forward to it. Uh, leg vice. Yeah, I've actually got a leg vice. I've never mounted it. It's still sitting outside waiting for me to mount it, languishing. It's definitely on my to-do list. <laughs> Tim, I wish. <laughs> um, as far as he goes with weight, Anthony, I'm... See, the thing is, it depends on the user, and it depends on what function you want it to perform. Um, God, this cuts so nicely. Anyway, um, <laughs> Alex Steele. Yeah, right. Sure. In my dreams. Man, if I did a collab with Alex Steele, I'd be a uh, YouTube millionaire overnight. Oh, that man is incredible. Um. <laughs> Just keep throwing them out, Tim. Um, yeah, so weight of hammers. Stop distracting me. Um, you're my size and bigger. How the hell are you bigger than me? Right. I find that hard to believe. Not many people are bigger than me. It's not that it's um, impossible, but that's... Quite impressive, if it's true. Um, I'm using my specific hammer. My specific hammer is a pound and a half, I think. Yeah, I think, I think this is a... It's a pound and a half or a pound and three quarters. <laughs> um, it's mainly for finishing work. So it's mainly for beveling. Um, it's not for super heavy material moving. If you're going to use a Japanese bladesmithing hammer for serious metal removing, then I would suggest your three pound, your two pound, um, you know, even your four pound, if you've got the muscles, um, would be well worth using. But um, yeah, for my purposes, I, all I need is a pound and a half. And I can hit as hard with that pound and a half as I can hit with a two and a half pound rounding hammer. So yeah, do, do yeah, you choose your um, choose your hammer based on its desired uh, desired uh, desired job. I suppose that's what I was going to say. Thinking of words, words, Englishing. It's very hard. What the hell do we? Oh, there it is. Yeah. So Anthony, I'm six foot four. And um, up until November of last year, I was 197 kilos. So if you're my size, I'm impressed. Um, I have since since November of last year lost 33 kilos though. So uh, pretty happy with that. I said that the, the other bladesmith that I'm doing a collab with has one YouTube video on his channel. One YouTube video. He is not Big Dog Forge. He is not Chandler Dickinson. He is not Alex Steele or Green Beetle. And he's a local. Where I'm actually going to his forge and we're gonna we're gonna work at his place. So no, it's none of those people, and it's not Bruce Barnett. Although I would love 
to work one-on-one -on -one with Bruce. That man is way too busy to be doing YouTube crap with me. I would be amazed if Luke even... <laughs> yeah, we've totally been planning a YouTube video together, haven't we, Luke? You don't have a YouTube video in your account. Yeah, I, Bruce is in Bridgetown, this is true, but he's also way too busy, and I would be amazed if he'd even watched one of my YouTube videos. Bruce is an awesome guy, but I don't think... <laughs> yeah, um, I don't think it's time to mess around with wannabes like me. No, the um, the collaboration is with Flynn, Flynn Sharp, Flynn Sharp of Flynn Sharp knives. Yeah, yep. Flynn makes some pretty fucking serious burners. Um, I've actually I've actually used a set of his burners previously, and they are bad ass. So if he's making new burners, you're getting a good deal. But yeah, no, I'm doing a collaboration with him on um, Friday next week. We will be doing a collaboration. We'll be making something absolutely epic, but I can't tell you what it is. You guys are just gonna have to wait for the video to come out. I've given away enough as it is. Yep, Flynn's an egg red guy. Absolutely, 100%. He and I caught up at Jake's going away party. Um, Jake Mantell, who is sadly leaving us for the, uh, the south of Australia. Uh, Jake's moving back to South Australia. had enough of us hillbilly yokels decided to make, move back to civilization. Nah, but seriously, he's, um... Oh, thanks, Anthony. Yeah, it's, it's going to be a great, or it's going to be a great collab. I think it's going to turn out absolutely spectacular. Not to toot my own horn or anything. But yeah, no, I reckon it's going to be awesome. You guys are going to love it. Ugh, clung. More on alert, more on alert. E -e warning, warning. No worries, Tim. Cheers for that, mate. I'll get back to you as soon as I possibly can. No, it's not, unfortunately, Luca. Although it may or may not involve forge welding. Uh, that's all I'm going to say. Mm. 
might be closer than you realize. against the grain. Clickety click. Clickety click, clickety click. Ah. Oh, hi there. Didn't see you there. No, it won't be raindrop or uh, Damascus of any kind. Okay. Not in the traditional sense, at least. I'm not saying anymore. That's it. <laughs> you guys are going to have to wait. No worries, Luca. Thanks for chilling out with us, mate. God, this cuts so nicely. Oh, I'll tell you what. This wood is absolutely stunning. Like it. Absolutely stunning. Yes, you got it. You got it. Absolutely. We're gonna slaughter a thousand innocents and we're going to make a cursed blade from their blood. Now, nah, I've said all I'm gonna say on that subject. As the Great Forrest Gump once said, that's all I have to say about that. Good night, Forge Widow. <laughs> Love you. Doesn't even come out saying good night, she just messaged me on uh <laughs> just messaged me on my live stream. True love. My wife, everyone. Thank God I have such respectful viewers. Yeah, screwed this one up a little bit. Screwed 
the pooch. It's alright, I'll make it work. We will make it work. We have the technology. Sometimes I feel really stupid. Standing here going, wow, I wish I had a third hand to hold this item for me. Standing in front of a vice. <laughs> Oi. Christ. I am so smart. So, Sigwan, when are you going to invite me to a D&D campaign, man? <laughs> I'm feeling left out. Yeah. You know they're a keeper when they understand that you need your time in the forge. Don't say that. Don't say that, George. We don't want them talking to each other. What kind of chaos would that create? Next thing you know, they'll start a union. times in this stream, but god damn, this wood is so fun to work. Oh, well, keep me in mind when you finish your world, eh, Sigmar? I'll be there with bells on. Thanks Anthony, always looking out for my bottom end. Bottom line, I should say. Came out wrong. Anyway. would not be fun. <laughs> we might never get our forges back. Or, you know, our DND campaigns. Or our furniture making workshops. That's it, man. 
conspiracy, I tell you. Time for my super manly water. Manliest way to drink. Whew. Sorry for belly flash there, guys. <laughs> The second one always goes faster because I know what I did wrong with the first one. <laughs> Time flies when you're making axe handles. <laughs> oh, eh? Yeah. Nice job, man. Yep, gotta make stuff for the mock wife. My wife gives me crap because I end up giving her all of my, uh, all of my failures. stuff up a project. Babe, you want a new thing? She takes it with a smile, but I don't think uh, she's too impressed, if I'm honest. Gotta get rid of them somewhere, don't you? content you guys came for. Come for the smithings, stay for the farts. That's what they say. Juvenile humor is always good. 
actually when it's bad. <laughs> yeah, you gotta be careful making stuff for people. Because then people might think you're in the habit. <laughs> And then you ne never get out of it. Something I didn't mention earlier. Oh, cheers, George. Thanks, mate. Yes, you're, you're absolutely right, there, Zygmunt. Cheers, George, mate. I'll see you in the next one, eh? Take care. Crunch. I think I'm going to take a photo of all the shavings that I've got down here. And I'm going to make a, a vague book post. Just going, last night's stream was amazing. Why weren't you there? You know who you are. And just see how many people get super offended by the idea that I try and out them. But then again, I'm that kind of asshole, so. Finish that if you uh... <laughs> That's it. I don't think they're worth that much effort there, mate. Send me your address and I'll send you a note. <laughs> Actually, hand write. Um, I'm into I'm into penmanship. I, I love uh, love fountain pens. Big fountain pen fan. And um, so I hand write a uh, a letter to everyone who buys an item from me. So you want a note from me, Anthony? All you have to do 
is buy something from me. And you can buy from me through my Etsy link, which is below all of my videos. Because <laughs> I'm nothing if not a mercenary. Coming along, coming along. Boogity, 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 let's go racing. No, it's better the other way. Just gonna check if this one fits. So these are about the same size of eye, which is good. It means that my consistency is Fairly good. And you still got an inch to go. Still got an inch to go. If you guys have never worked wood by hand, I highly suggest that you try it out because it is one of the funnest things you can do. It's so rewarding. You really get to connect with the work. You feel every grain, every fiber of the wood as you work it. changes on this one. I made a bit of a boo-boo. Oh well. It's alright. It's easily fixed.
Home stretch. Home stretch. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, making fountain pens is probably not something I'm going to try very soon. Purely based on the fact that I'm not that good at turning things on a wave. And, um, I. I'd either have to buy the fountain pen nib from somewhere or... Well, no, I'd, I'd have to buy the fountain pen nib from somewhere because there's no friggin' way that I'd be able to, uh... That I'd be able to make a fountain pen nib. It's just too fine... Too fine work for, uh, for a craftsman such as me. So that's the orientation we're going to have. Here I am talking about orientations. <laughs> Thank you, whoever's stuck with me. I think it's you, Anthony. Getting a bit late for everyone else. Watch something. 
even more entertaining. <laughs> oh well. That's life, eh? intent on getting this finished before the stream ends, so uh, just hang in there. That was a lot of work. What we got there? All right. Ah, awesome. Yeah, he finished that ages ago. And Sigmon, oh sweet. Man, even if we don't D&D, &D, we should just catch up, because you're only an Armadale, aren't you? Yeah, no, Flynn, Flynn finished that knife ages ago. He's, um, he's mostly active on Instagram, so if you've got Instagram, uh, go and follow him there. It's Flynn Sharp Knives. And, uh, yeah, he uploads some pretty awesome stuff, and, uh, whenever he has something available, he tends to, uh, put it up for sale on Insta. So, yeah, if you've got Insta, or if you don't have Insta, download Insta and follow me, Sam Towns Bladesmith, and Flynn, Flynn Sharp Knives, and you're sure to see all the cool behind the scenes stuff. I mean, I only upload my YouTube videos maybe once or twice a week, whereas Insta, I try and upload a video, uh, a photo a day, so you're more likely to keep up with what's going on that way. Oh, well, Anthony, if I'm ever in the UK, um, unlikely in the next couple of years, but if I'm ever in the UK, I'll be sure to look you up. Love the idea of being able to catch up with my subscribers, that'd be friggin' awesome. And it wouldn't be possible without this YouTube channel, so... Keep it in mind, mate. Unfortunately, in my current financial situation means that there's very unlikely that I'm going to travel anywhere anytime soon. Except for one place. York! Oh, beautiful. Hmm. 
My dad's from Berkshire, from uh, Abingdon. Which is now part of Oxfordshire, which he's very upset about. Serious case of the I don't want us. Do it properly, Sam. Ugh. Get up. Yeah, no, it's not a problem with the head, unfortunately. It's a problem with the uh, problem with the handle. Handle's taper is too steep. That is not a problem that can be solved without removing wood from the taper. But I gotta be really careful how I remove wood because the fit up is almost perfect as it is. I'm gonna sneak up on it. This is my least favorite part of handle fitting. This is all the finicky BS. Yeah, I've gotta file it to fit. Basically. Actually, you know what? I have a file that would be better for this. Cabinet Rafer's Rasp. These things are friggin' awesome. Love them. lightning fast and just like that you've got what you need brilliant love it yeah yeah it's awesome uh, it was made in Sheffield funnily enough another one of my favorite places on the planet Sheffield England
Oh yeah, all the best. All the best. Knife making capital of the world for quite a few years. It was a mecca for knife makers. Still is. For some, like myself. Now, never cut towards yourself, kids, he says, as he cuts towards himself. Like a fucking numpty he is. Hey, how's it going, Kyan? I am fitting axe handles, if it wasn't obvious. <laughs> That's what I'm doing. <laughs> Yorkshire. Never really perfected my Yorkshire accent. Morning. Well, maybe where you are, Dustin. <laughs> it's uh, close to 10 p.m. over here. Thanks for chilling, chiming in though. How's that anvil coming along? It's just, yes, this is the second handle, yeah. First handle's already finished. I'll show you that in a minute once I finish this one. <laughs> this will be the second and last, I think. And it'll be time for Betty Buyers for this old man. How's that anvil coming along, Dustin? Yeah, fair enough. Getting much hammer time in? She's dead. Which old witch? Wicked witch. That's ah, much better. Much better. Much, much better. There we go. Just making sure that there's no gaps here. No gaps. There are a few gaps back here, but that will change when I knock this on. So, back to the vice. Da -da -da -da. God damn it. I'm gonna loosen this one. Maybe that one, there we go. Uh, soft doors. Copper soft doors, if you don't have them, get them. They're freaking awesome. Love them. Alright. Down we go. Alrighty. <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. Ugh. Throwing shit everywhere. <laughs> Dropped me mallet. <laughs> I 
My neighbors hate me. For good reason. Oh, that's a nice, that's a nice fit up. That's a nice fit up, if I do say so myself. Seamless. Beautiful. This one's a little more forward than the last one. Yeah. No, they're about the same. They're about the same. A bit thereabouts. Thereabouts. Oh, Jesus. Okay, maybe I'll, maybe I'll use this one instead. Yeah, belt grinder is not necessary. It's an awesome tool to have, but uh, it's not necessary. Don't let me dissuade you from getting one, because you know I wouldn't be without mine now. But also, don't dissuade yourself by saying that you need one, because you really don't. Every time I thought about, oh god, I only need that one super duper power tool, I remind myself of the, uh, the guys that um, used to make swords from scratch with nothing but hard work and rudimentary tools. Files are probably my number one favorite tool in the workshop. Bar almost none. They are friggin fantastic. I love them. Maybe I'm a weirdo, but you know, files, that's what does it for me. Clickspring did a pretty good video on filing actually. If you're interested in filing techniques, look up Clickspring. He's a fellow Aussie. And he's done some pretty awesome videos recently on hand filing. Not specifically to knife makers, mostly to clock makers. Actually, he's a he's a clock maker. Yeah, and a vice. Good, good, good. Vices are also incredibly useful. I had a bit of an idiot moment this uh, this afternoon on the live stream when I decided that I needed a third hand. And I was sitting there going, God, I wish I had a third hand, and I'm sitting there right in front of a friggin' vice. Derp. <laughs> Dumbass. Like doing a bit of a hand faceted approach. Um, to my. Especially my traditionally made stuff, my, my medieval style stuff, I prefer a uh, hand faceted look to a uh, machine finish. Gives it that little bit extra, a little bit of extra flair. Ah, to 
disgusting. Hey, Rusty, how you doing, man? Good to know I've got, good to know Jeff's spreading the good word. <laughs> good timing, good timing. <laughs> that was, uh, I don't think you could have timed that better if you'd planned it. You didn't plan it, did you? Was very 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 ironic time what'd you miss well we've been making uh we've been making handles for axes um funnily enough that's in the title <laughs> yeah yeah absolutely big one it was all planned 9 11 was an inside job now someone's going to take a clip of that start making me look like some kind of conspiracy theorist nut It'll be great. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm just putting the finishing touches on this second axe handle, uh, throwing axe handle. Uh, I'm just about to finalize the hand sanding. And then I will flame the handle and be done. Aliens. Isn't that the, the hand gesture he uses? Yeah, I'll, I have a second one that I finished earlier in the stream, but uh, this one's the this one's the second one, I should say. It's been mostly a hand tool stream, <laughs> which is great. I love working wood by hand, so it's, um, it's always good fun. And we've just been talking shit. <laughs> so Rusty, do you run a YouTube channel? I haven't come across you um, in my searches. But if you do, I will definitely sub you. Yeah, man. I, I, earlier I was in the stream, I was kind of doing this. Kind of like those guys on a Omegle. <laughs> Absolutely, Anthony. Hallelujah. Spread that good word, brother. <laughs> Nine months. Sweet, man. I'm going to have to check you out. Uh, you know, YouTube channel. <laughs> Yeah, cool. So, what do you do on your YouTube channel, man? Shout yourself out. We got five people watching, which is the maximum we've had in the. Cool. Cool. Good to know that Jeff's uh, spreading the word. Not that kind of plug, kind. <laughs> Beginner blacksmithing with mistakes. Well, that's the beauty of beginning. And that's the beauty of sharing that kind of stuff, is you make mistakes. I've made plenty of mistakes on live stream. Just ask Anthony. <laughs> yep, well, it's the only way you learn, making mistakes. Which is why I never learn, because I never make mistakes. Because yeah. unlike blacksmiths, I'm a... Uh... 
I'm like blacksmiths. I'm a bladesmith. And bladesmiths don't make mistakes. They just make smaller knives. Yeah, I threw them there. <laughs> That's deep, Dustin. It's really deep. stretch. Those of you who were watching earlier in the stream, which I don't think is many of you. Yeah, sanding is, um, is probably one of the least favorite parts of, yeah. Yep, yeah, me too. I love hitting stuff, which is why I do tool making as well. As you've probably seen on my channel, if you've gone through my channel, if, or if you just come to my live stream on my channel, I do, um, I'm basically just do how-to videos, mostly quiet how-to videos, or just showing what I'm doing. And um, I'm, I'm actually a beginner toolmaker, blacksmith kind of self, myself. Um, I've been bladesmithing for about five years. Um, And uh, yeah, I've just been enjoying sharing the experience of learning to make new stuff. Yeah, quiet, yeah. Well, that's appreciated, man. Every sub is appreciated. Uh, now we get to play with fire. Yay! <sighs> Cheers, Ken Anthony. I'll see you at the next video, mate. Ah, uh, come on. There we go. Where did I flame the last one? Set fire to my leg. <laughs> Absolutely, Dustin. You got the right idea. Flaming. This wood burns beautifully. It smells really nice. Still dropping shit. We shall grab some four or well, parts of the country. Um, well, so long as you're an Australian, um, I'm in Perth, the southern part of the metropolitan area, to be more exact. We're not getting any more exact than that. Yeah, cool. Nice Aussie Smiths to go stick together. How come I haven't seen your name? Hence why I'm still working. Are you, I'm not sure if you're referring to the fact that I live in the southern part of Perth. <laughs> and that's why I'm still working. Ah, Melbourne. Right. One of them. 
Fair enough. Strange that I haven't seen your uh, your stuff advertised anywhere. Are you on the um, Australian blacksmiths, bladesmiths, knife makers um, forum on Facebook? So normally a good place to get noticed. Is there a YouTube blacksmithing one? I didn't know there was. There you go. Research. I don't do any. <laughs> so if there's a YouTube blacksmithing one, I should definitely be on there. I'll have to look it up when I get off stream. Yeah, cool. Imagine Mr. Steel would be a part of that. Mr. Steel. <laughs> Good old Alec. He's been doing some really good stuff recently. Ah, the little guys. Yeah, like me. <laughs> Fair enough. Oh, that's good. Support network for the little assholes. Like myself. None for the, uh, none of those big wigs. And there we have it. Another beautiful honey colored with black flames throwing hawk to match the other beautiful honey colored black flame ah! black flamed throwing axe which I said I was going to wipe the oil off of but I didn't need to because it dried out on its own this wood is incredibly thirsty Thirsty, thirsty wood, but that's okay, that's good. The more of this oil it soaks up, the better. Get it in there. Get it down ya. There you go. So. Thumbnail shot. <laughs> yeah. So there, there you go. <laughs> hey, no, none of that talking in this in this stream, Dusty. Please, I don't want to get banned from YouTube. Thank you. <laughs> Yep, so one came out a touch longer than the other. I'm not sure if you can see that. Yeah, you go. Yeah, it's like an inch. Inch and a half longer than the other. <laughs> I understand, but people can misconstrue that kind of stuff. So I'm going to leave it at that. Two beautiful axes. Both designed for throwing, which is why they're uh, upswept. You notice that the necks sweep up that way so that when they fly, they fly so that it lands like that. Because you don't want it pounding that uh, that too much because you'll split it. But yeah, they came out quite nice. I'm, I'm really happy with those. So these are going to be for sale um, at a market I'm doing. And if they don't sell at the market, they will be on my Etsy store. So make sure that uh, you check out my Etsy store after the weekend and they may be up there so make sure you jump on there and get them if you want them 
There will be a set of three. Um, I'm going to try and sell them as a set. If I get offered on singles, I might take it. So um, make sure you check out my Etsy store. Etsy store is in the description of most of my videos on my channel. So make sure you check that out. Unfortunately not. Only SCA members allowed for this one. Yeah, only SCA members will be going to this uh, specific event. But not to worry. There will be plenty of availability in the future for cool stuff. Um, and yep, I'll be doing a collaboration with a fellow fellow knife maker here in WA by the name of Flynn Sharp. We will be getting together to make a... Uh, well, you'll find out. <laughs> but that'll be happening next week. Uh, so the video should be up in the next two weeks, I'm hoping. Uh, if all goes well with the uh, filming. And yeah, uh, thank you guys. Any, anyone who hung out with me for the whole stream, that was amazing. Uh, you guys are all brilliant. We're at 200 and, almost 280 subscribers. Well, we should be at 280 subscribers now, which is fantastic. I will be doing a giveaway at 500 subs. So get the word out there. Let's build the family. And um, you know, let's share some more experiences because I'm having a ball of a time. Uh, if you have any suggestions for my channel if you have uh, 281 excellent thanks rusty go check out rusty as well i'm going to be checking him out after this stream we got us, uh, us australian blacksmiths have got to support each other um but yeah no seriously thank you everyone who's uh, supported me and um i'm looking forward to the future it's going to be great uh, it's going to be some amazing projects coming up very soon i've got to finish the basilard which is going to be a great fun project to finish um, and yeah, so I will see you all next time, whenever that's going to be. I don't know when I'm going to do my next live stream. It could be next week. It could be within a month. But I will be doing more live streams. So look forward to that. Cheers, guys. Thanks for hanging out. All right. Have a good one.